Hello and welcome. In this tutorial video, we will be going over the random vibration fatigue life and fatigue analysis of the camera mount shown on the right and simulate as if it were attached to the World Rallycross car shown on your left. The mount is made out of structural steel and is required to withstand 24 hours under the extreme racing conditions. The workflow in this tutorial will be as follows. We'll start with our static structural model, applying a point mass load in order to simulate the weight of the camera. We'll then evaluate our initial stress results just due to the weight of the camera and use that as the pre-stress during our modal analysis. We'll use the results of the pre-stress and the modal analysis in order to determine the accompanying frequencies for our PSD loads during our random vibration analysis. We will then spend the rest of the tutorial walking you through how to determine the stresses due to random vibration loading and finding the total fatigue life of the mount. In order to determine the fatigue life of the part, we'll be using Steinberg's formulation, which is the default setting in ANSYS Mechanical. Steinberg's formulation uses all three stress occurrences of sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3, and the rate of occurrence along with the very popular and common miners rule in order to compute the total fatigue damage of the system. So without further ado, let's jump into our simulation. So now walking through the model, as you can see, you have the point mass sitting right above the part. I have already performed the static structural piece using just the standard with gravity. I have just placed a simple body sizing refinement mesh on the part. Uh, we have evaluated just our equivalent stress for the static structural model as well as our total deformation which is looks like almost two tenths of a thousandth of an inch. We've done our initial modal analysis using the static structural pre-stress. Calculated the total deformation just flipping through at each of the modes and are ready to take on our random vibration test. Now, for our random vibration analysis, we are going to insert a PSD G acceleration. For our boundary condition, we're going to select our fixed port, and we're going to start filling out this table. So, one of the nice things about ANSYS is that in an industry situation, you would be able to drag and drop your data, your random vibration data for, you know, for example, if you're designing a suspension component, you can drag and drop data that simulates a 20 minute commute car ride. Or if you're an aerospace guy, you can simulate a rocket launch. And it's very, very easy just to import your data. Seeing how we're dealing with such a s small model and kind of a simple part, we're just going to enter it by hand. So give me one second, we'll cut to when I have this table filled in with the PSD G acceleration values I've calculated for the rally car. All right, so now that I have that table filled in with my G acceleration values, I'm going to select my direction, which is the Y direction. I'm going to simulate the same direction that gravity is acting in. And I'll go ahead and solve for my stress results. Notice I just have a de directional deformation and then equivalent stresses for each Sigma 1, Sigma 2, and Sigma 3. Now, once your model has solved, go ahead and flip through your stress results. The only one that you're particularly going to care about is your Sigma 3 value, which includes 99.73% of all stress values due to random vibration loading. So this is going to be your best bet at accurately showing the amount of stress your part is going to see due to random vibration. All right. And so because we are mainly worried about the fatigue life and we're positive that it's not going to break during normal random vibration, let's go ahead and click on solution again. And under tools, insert a fatigue tool. Notice how Steinberg's method and formulation is already selected as well as our stress component is von Mises which is the industry standard. I'm going to insert a life tool 
and under life we can go ahead and solve this model all right so very quickly we notice that the middle of the part is all on the same gradient of red which is 73.514 seconds that calculates to exactly 20.4 hours so based on that we are not passing the 24 hour mark with this part unfortunately we get very close with 20.4 but not quite up to that 24 hour mark since we want to do a little bit more digging we go ahead and click damage now after solving for the damage accumulated by the part you can evaluate and look at the two areas where cracks are most likely to propagate in your part so look at this fillet here we have a little patch underneath the part here and at this sharp edge and so those are the areas that I would address first when redesigning this part and trying to get this lifespan up to that magical 24 hours that you're looking for for the rally car. I hope you have enjoyed the video and hope you have a great day. Thank you.